Good evening from New York. It is a war that President Bush not only started but wanted to start and it made no attempt to stop. Our fifth story in the countdown. To paraphrase a number that I will still reserve for use at the end of these news hours, five years, nine months, and 26 days after President Bush declared mission accomplished in Iraq, today President Obama announcing that the combat mission there would finally end by August 31st, 2010. The bigger problem, the mission beyond that, Author and Washington Post senior military reporter Thomas Ricks believing there's a good chance Obama's war in Iraq might last longer than Bush's war there did. Mr. Ricks, to join us presently, first the details. At Camp Lejeune in North Carolina, the beginning of the end, maybe. President Obama setting a hard target of more than 90,000 troops out of Iraq in the next 18 months, from 142,000 troops now to between 35,000 and 50,000 by the end of next summer. Under the security agreement negotiated by the Bush administration, all forces to be out of Iraq by the end of 2011. Secretary Gates joining Obama for his announcement mission. On board Marine One, on the way to the base, the president notifying Iraqi Prime Minister al-Maliki, and minutes before taking the podium, placing a call to former President Bush. Six years nearly after the beginning of the war he opposed, Almost six weeks after taking office, President Obama drawing a finish line for U.S. military involvement in Iraq. We have acted with careful consideration of events on the ground, with respect for the security agreements between the United States and Iraq, and with a critical recognition that the long-term solution in Iraq must be political, not military. Because the most important decisions that have to be made about Iraq's future must now be made by Iraqis. In marked contrast to the stimulus package, President Obama will not have to win over Republicans with his revised withdrawal timetable. Leaders of his own party are resistant. Earlier this evening, he was asked about that weird juxtaposition by Jim Lehrer. You're not uh, the least bit uneasy over the fact that John McCain and John Boehner, the, the Republican leader of the House, have praised your plan while the Democrats are criticizing it? Uh, you know, I... Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't make these decisions based on uh, polls or popularity. I make the decisions based on what I think is best. This is consistent with what I, what I said during the campaign. Uh, the fact, uh, if anything, I think people should uh, be uh, interested in the fact that there's been a movement in the direction of what I thought was going to be the right plan in the first place. Let's look at this from two angles. First, with our own political analyst, Richard Wolf. Good evening, Richard. Good evening, Keith. I don't make these decisions based on polls or popularity. Does that, does that sound as uh, Bushian to you as it does to me? And, and can it possibly be a good thing when we're talking about anything, let alone about Iraq? Well, it does sound Bushian, but that's not necessarily in itself the reason to say everything is wrong with this position. I mean, there was a lot in that Jim Lehrer interview that could never have come out of President Bush's mouth. He said that the war was a huge strategic blunder, that it was a massive diversion from the real war against al-Qaeda in Afghanistan. He said the civilian leadership had failed, where the military personnel had succeeded. So none of those things could ever have come out of President Bush. But when it comes to the polls, look, there's something slightly disingenuous about both President Obama and President Bush saying those things, because these are two White Houses that poll everything down to the grassroots here. Uh, it's true that both presidents actually don't make their decisions purely on polls. They present their decisions and shape those decisions presentation based on the polls. But Bush's problem was not that he was led by polls, that was that he made the wrong strategic uh, uh, judgments. I, I think you have to look at what the substance is more than the expression in this interview. But as Jim Lehrer said in the clip we just played, uh, and it's an obvious point, I guess, Republicans praising the plans and, and Democrats having the misgivings, politically, shouldn't the president be worried about that to some degree? Well, he should be more worried about how he's going to get those 50,000 troops out of, uh, out of Iraq in the end run. But, uh, you know, what's interesting here is that Democrats are actually stepping up in Congress and doing what a majority party should be doing. There isn't the knee-jerk, let's support the commander-in-chief approach that we saw out of the Republicans. That's exactly what Democrats should be doing. Should uh, the president be uh, concerned? Well, he should be actually questioned hard about what the purpose of those troops, those remaining troops are. That's where Democrats are concerned. What is their purpose? And it needs to be as clearly defined as he is saying to himself, the troops in Afghanistan need to have a mission that is clearly defined. So, uh, yeah, he should be concerned about what they're asking about, not where the questions come from.
Well, should this be the first uh, question here, this emphasis on combat troops versus non-combat troops in a conflict where there really is no front line? Uh, is, the, is the president guilty of mere semantics here? I mean, any American in uniform on the ground there since 2003 has been at risk of being in the wrong place at the wrong time when a roadside bomb explodes or any other element of war comes into play. No question there is danger for every uh, American troop there in Iraq, but the dangers are much less than they used to be. The rewards are potentially greater. The, the question is, is he staying true to what he was talking about through the election? Yes, he is. Uh, and in terms of what the Iraqis uh, are expecting, this wasn't a Republican invasion of Iraq. This was an American invasion. Democrats need to understand that uh, there is a moral responsibility for American troops, whether they're led by a Republican commander-in-chief or a Democrat. This war has to be ended in the right way. And when there was a full-blown civil war, the arguments for pulling out were much greater than they are now. The question is, when do they come out? The president said there was a specific date. And about that, lastly, about the specific date, how much room did he give himself to change that if he feels circumstances weren't? He has always given himself wiggle room, but I think uh, the, t the timing is very important here. Both of these dates come just before elections. If he doesn't stick true to those dates and doesn't explain why he's bumping those dates around, then the voters will get the final say. A great point. MSNBC political analyst Richard Wolf, as always. Richard, great thanks. Have a great weekend. Thank you.